Hello everyone, this is CypherDike, and today we're going to be playing a game called Minions of Mirth. It came out in 2005 and was one of those rare gems that I found in the pile of MMOs that was coming out at the time. What they give you for what you pay for the game was probably the best thing I was able to find at the time. And you could tell that they put a lot of work into the game. They put a lot of heart into the game. And um, I, I just want to show you the game. And we're probably going to actually do a series where I level a group up from level 1 to level 100 times 3. And I'll talk about what that means in just a moment. So what you get for buying the game whenever it came out, and still now, you can still purchase the game, but the servers aren't online anymore. But don't fret, uh, you can actually play the single player version of the game, which you get for buying the full version of the game. You got the ability to have an encyclopedia in the game. It's like a wiki for the game within the game. So if you were out fighting and you killed something and you didn't know what that specific item you just looted is for, you can type into the encyclopedia and search that item and it'd tell you if it was for a quest, if it was for cooking, if it was for brewing, if it was for poison making, whatever it was, it would allow you to look it up. And that was something that was far into the future thinking. I mean, no other game I've ever played has that kind of system or spent that amount of time to get that kind of system into their game. That said, there's probably millions of pages in this encyclopedia, but if you were to do the same thing for, say, EverQuest, it would be too big. It, it would take a long time to go through that kind of information in EverQuest uh, that you have here. The other thing that really drew me to the game is that while you had classes that you knew, like warrior, monk, bard, cleric, shaman, um, and other classes that you've heard of before but had different names like tempest which is like a mage um you also had the revealer which is like an enchanter and you had the thief which is your rogue class uh paladin barbarian ranger and and much much more available to you those classes were somewhat what you thought they were in in other games but they also had their little secrets that you found out about as you started leveling up like at level 75 wizards get the ability to become dragons <laughs> no other game have i ever seen that before where you go and kill a dragon that um that has the spell that allows you to turn into the dragon that you just killed and those different dragons, those four different dragons that you can become give you four different abilities. One dragon gives you the ability to fly. Another dragon gives you high resistances. Another one gives you high mana regeneration and other abilities. Another one is for melee combat. Each character has the ability to be three classes. So if you're a wizard, a monk, and um, say a cleric, you have one of those uh, dragon forms that will allow you to modify your melee class or modify your ability to heal, things like that. I just really added to the game and made it a little bit different in that way, but also made it a whole lot different whenever you got to those points. And just it was just a really nice surprise. So this game or what you're seeing going on behind what I'm talking about is me killing some of the harder mobs in the game. Uh, some of them are just placeholders for even harder mobs. And I want to talk about the mob system in the game. So you, as you level up, there's different zones that you go to, different dungeons you can go to to kill mobs that are within your level range. So it works like a normal MMO. One of the things that's really fun about the game is that there are mobs in the game that are unkillable by a single character. This character is really strong. 
He is a warrior, a monk, and a cleric. So he has the highest defense, highest um, offense, and he also has the ability to heal himself for 100,000 hit points. And he has about 1,500,000 hit points uh, to boot. But if he takes on one of the mobs called Sodi, which I want to talk about that more in a minute, he would die probably in about five seconds. That is, with him stepping back healing himself for a hundred thousand throwing in all of his other heals he would still die in seconds just because of the the fact that these mobs don't play around they, they are they are just um going to come at you much harder than anything else i've ever fought in the game so sodi mobs are a rare class it's actually a race to be honest and they are so rare that they only spawn once a year. Um, two of them spawn every month and uh, despawn the next month. And then a new one spawns the next month. So you have one in January, late in January, another one spawns. The first one despawns in February. In February, you have another one spawn and so on. So you have these mobs, but once you've killed them, they're gone for another year. You have to wait another full real life year for them to spawn again. And that just made the game so much fun because you had these raids that were just beast. You had everyone coming out to try to kill them. And um, whoever killed them or whoever's guild killed them would get the loot from them and they had the ability to drop three different types of rings earrings rather that are class-based earrings they're the best earrings in the game and just i mean <laughs> just the the fact that you have those kind of mobs in this game are fantastic so one of the things i plan to do is to try to kill those mobs to do that i would have to start from the beginning uh, do all of the quest lines in the game to get uh, this skill or this this ability called presence it modifies all of your stats and um, and you get it by completing quests only actually there's some armor in the game that gives you presence some weapons in the game that gives you presence as well but that is something that I want to do is I want to level a full group from level 1 to level 100 times 3 and um, and see if I can try to take on one of those mobs at some point. In the end, the game is just absolutely amazing. If you ever get a chance to get the game, get it. And it's going to be hard. This is EverQuest hard kind of game, meaning that a lot of these quests, they just tell you you need to go and find this person. And that's all they tell you. Where that person is, you you have to find out. Um, the encyclopedia in the game helps you a little bit. But even once you know where they're at, like by the zone that they're at, finding them in that zone is not easy. Uh, there are some mobs that I've, I've hunted the whole zone trying to find the mob that I'm looking for. And I still, it takes them just me killing everything in the zone that I can just to get them to spawn and um that while that's kind of annoying and and, and just the pain it, it shows that they they weren't just giving you a, a product that was going to be easy it for me this was my second everquest live like beginning of everquest live when you knew nothing about the game that is what this game was to me and because of that, it really made me just enjoy the game. So, about now, we should be at the last fight in the game, which is Zalthulu, and also his, uh, his beasts that protect him. This guy, he is the last main boss in the game before you start taking on Sodi, and he drops class-specific weapons, and armor um so the the equipment that you can get from him is game ending or game changing it's actually the way you would say it and when you actually kill him 
uh, it is definitely well worth it. And um, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you want to see more. And I am going to definitely be doing more of this game soon. So thank you so much for watching. This is Cypher Deck. Peace out. <laughs>